This video is about massages after chin liposuction. What's up everyone, Dr. Sagar Patel, Beverly Hills facial plastic surgeon. I specialize in chin liposuction and this video is about massages after chin liposuction. We're gonna be talking with a lymphatic specialist, Aubrey, who's here about how to massage after chin liposuction. And I know this video is just about chin liposuction, but if you're worried about how to massage after a BBL or lymphatic massage after any liposuction procedure, this video might help you. So first, I wanted to introduce Aubrey. Aubrey, tell us a little about yourself. Hi guys, I'm a massage therapist and manual lymphatic drainage specialist, and I work with Dr. Patel for virtual and hands-on consultations. What we wanted to talk about in this video is everything you need to know. I've made previous videos, but when I started, I used to tell people you don't need a specialist and I was wrong. I know now that having a specialist can make the biggest difference. So what we wanted to talk about was a little bit about why it's important to get massages after your liposuction procedure. So when it comes down to it, having liposuction of the chin is very, very intense for what goes on in your neck. So after liposuction, when do we meet with them? After liposuction, you want to go hands-on on day four or day six for virtual consultations. So typically I see people around those days and once I clear them saying, hey, everything's normal, we're sending them over to start massages. Massages are going to be critical for your results. And as crazy as it sounds, I've heard of surgeons saying you don't need or shouldn't get massages. And I wanted to tell you from the experience of someone who's done thousands and thousands of procedures in this video, why that is an absolute no-no. So your day four, day six, you've gotten liposuction. What does your neck feel like? It feels very squishy and puffy. It can be kind of a loose feeling underneath your chin here where the adipose has been removed or it can feel quite hot and hard. Now, in the end of the day, it's like literally, I call it the Rice Krispies snap, crackle, and pop. You can feel things squishing around. Some of that is blood. Now, in the end of the day, a lot of surgeons will say, start massaging on day one or two. That I disagree with. The reason for that, I don't want you bleeding. We just did a whole bunch of stuff. Your blood vessels are closed, you're clamped. If you go ahead and stimulate that too early, you can create bleeding, make the bruising worse, and that's why we generally want you to wait. What we could have you do early on is on purpose, I leave your earlobe incisions open without any stitches so that if you do have even a drop or two of blood, you can push it up towards the side and get that drop or two of blood out. And a lot of what we see is because of that little bit of blood in liposuction, everything bleeds a little bit afterwards and everybody has a little bit of blood. And that's kind of part of what's causing some of these problems. There's a lot that goes into it, but that's part of it. Now, we went through what the neck feels like Early on, it's day four, you're starting massages. What are the couple things you wanna start doing early on? I work a lot with the lymphatic drainage because the longer that the inflammation is stuck in the, where the cannula went in, the more fibrosis and scar tissue we're gonna have later and the harder it's gonna break it down later. So we have to be very proactive in decreasing the inflammation, which will also help decrease your pain and symptoms. Now, in the end of the day, you have this kind of fullness in the neck. Early on, it really doesn't feel hard. Like you said, it's squishy. What, when we're talking about lymphatic massage, what are lymphatics? The lymphatic system is part of your circulatory system and your immune system. You have around four to 600 lymph nodes in the body and there are larger branches. Chin lipo massage is very important because around one third of all of 600 of your lymph nodes is in the chin area. You also have a lot in your head and your neck. You have your next largest branch in your axillary region. A lot are in the abdomen as well, the inguinal region behind your knees and in your elbow. Now, if one third of your entire body is in your neck, that can tell you exactly why, probably more than any procedure, this is super critical. But essentially, like, let's be honest, when I do lipo, it's destroying some of those lymphatics, whether it's by actually destroying it, even though they're deeper, or by creating so much scar tissue outside of them, they can't flow as well. So a lymphatic specialist comes in and re-establishing that flow. Let's talk through some tips and techniques of what you do to reestablish that flow early on. I use my hands a lot. I have some other techniques like diaphragmatic breathing, some vibration, some tapping, some brushing techniques, and then I use some tools. So the early on tools that you can use at home 
are dry brushes. If you don't want to buy a dry brush, you can just purchase a toothbrush or a sanitizer toothbrush at home. And you want to brush in the general flow of the lymph. So underneath your jawline is going to go towards your ear. You want to go on top of your jawline. It's also going to be kind of inflamed. And then on your neck, it's generally down. So like so. And to the left side, right? Why are we going to mostly to the left side? Because the lymphatic system meets the circulatory system on the left side. The left side also takes up three fourths of the whole lymphatic flow in your body. But when it comes down to it, we want everything flowing there. Why is it on the left side? Because your heart lives on the left side and that's closer to the heart. So it drains that way. So we kind of want to just flow everything, get that blood flowing, get everything moving to the left side. Now let's talk about skin. Early on, everyone's worried about their skin. I know we make everyone wear a wrap from anywhere from seven days to 14 days. So how are you managing the skin early on with the massages? The tissue itself is going to be a little hard or soft as I said before. We are doing some techniques with our fingers. We can do some self-massage, kneading alternate fingers or fingers together, some gliding as well. Dry brushing also helps the skin uh, exfoliate and it makes it nice and radiant. It brings the circulatory system to the area as well to help the skin out. Now, I always tell people something that you kind of say the opposite of, which I think is an important point because we both agree. I tell people I have a couple rules in massage. So my rules are number one, don't stop until I tell you to stop because it's not something that you get to determine when your neck is healed or not. For me, that determination is simple. When this part of your neck, which I destroyed, feels like this part of your neck, with I, which I didn't touch, you can stop. But that's gonna be a while before you get there. The second rule is I want you to massage at least three times a day for 15 minutes. Now, when it comes to a specialist, I think it's really, really critical to understand where they come in. It's not about doing something you can't do. It's about learning what you need to do. That is why Aubrey teaches virtual training sessions for people all over the country. Of course, it's better for someone to show you hands-on, but it's not always possible. But in the end of the day, if you're going into a lymphatic specialist who tells you to close your eyes and relax, you're missing the point entirely. That hour session you got isn't gonna solve the problem. It's about teaching you what you need to learn in order to get it. So as you are undergoing your specialist, wherever they are, your eyes need to be open. You need to be concentrating on the pressure, the areas of problems and what's happening. Now, when it comes down to it where we disagree, and it's actually an agreement, is gonna be that she says it shouldn't hurt. It should be a soft massage. Early on, I agree, it's soft but it's soft enough that it should still hurt because you are so tender. And in the end of the day, I think it's soft, but it should be soft enough to hurt in that everything just hurts in general. So it's not so little that it's not hurting. It's little enough, but it's still hurting. And we're just trying to break up those areas of liquid, get the blood flowing, and it's gonna take a little bit of tenderness and getting through that to get your results. Now. We've gotten in the initial areas. You talked about dry brushing. What are some other techniques that people can be doing day four to six to seven with whatever they encounter? There are a lot of hands-on techniques. You can do little circles. You can do some brushing, tapping. Vibration is really good. I use this metal gua sha for fascia and for lymphatic drainage. So for lymphatic drainage, you want to drain again towards the lymph nodes. A longer jaw, this is nicely divided so you can go towards the ear. And then on the neck, you want to go down. You don't want to go over your Adam's apple. That's contraindicated. So you can just go like this. You don't want to move your neck until the two week mark. So make sure you're not moving your neck. Just going down again and towards your ears. And we're really just trying to open up the mother nodes, right? So the lymphatic system actually lives way deeper than when we're going. But unfortunately, the swelling and the compression from everything doesn't allow them to drain. But we need the compression for your skin. And so your mother nodes live under a muscle that we call the sternocleidomastoid. So that's the muscle when you turn your neck, you're going to be able to see it over here. And so opening up those nodes in that area is really going to be what gets the results. How do you recommend people do that since they can't move their necks? Opening up the mother nodes, it's in the supraclavicular region, which is where your clavicle meets your sternum in this little area. I use my finger pads like this and I repeat it eight times going in towards the center, stretching the skin, not pressing down. Awesome. So to take a little pause on this, I think it's important to take a step back and realize I wish this video could be made for everyone without any questions. 
But the truth is, is every single person has a different recovery. I've had people where the fat comes out easier than humanly possible. It's super soft. I've had people where everything's stiff from previous Kybella and some people get more scar tissue than others. Similar to how we have different muscle, we have different skin, everyone's gonna heal differently. And that's where an evaluation by a specialist really makes a difference. And as a surgeon, I unfortunately don't have the ability to go through the detail of this, nor is it my specialty, and that's where setting up something like a virtual consultation with Aubrey makes the biggest difference. Of course, for her even, feeling it is helpful, but in the end of the day, if you don't trust the person to truly understand chin lipo lymphatic massage, chin lipo massage, then you're gonna really struggle with getting the best possible results. Like I said, I used to have patients all the time where I said, listen, you got two hands, use them. Why can't you do it yourself? In the end of the day, I realized if you don't do it properly, once it's been the time period, it's too late. Initially, we want this lymphatics to suck in so your skin can suck in, and then you go through a period where your body makes scar tissue. I call that the lipo lumpies. At that period, you need to break those up. That can actually replace the fat, and so now we're worried about that. So let's talk about phase two. So it's been about two weeks, someone's had surgery. Sometimes it happens earlier, right? Yeah. Most people get something called the lipo lumpies. It's these little areas of firm tissue. How do you manage those as opposed to the early on? So we get lipo lumpies. I like to also call them bands because they can be pretty thick bands, especially under this triangle of your jaw and underneath your chin. You want to mobilize them a lot, doing some skin rolling side to side, picking it up, twisting it, circling it, just vigorously moving it around. Because now is the time that you want to break it down manually. You want to prevent more scar tissue from happening and just really move everything around on your fascial layer. Yeah, so this is really just going to be more fascial, it's gonna be more muscular, it's gonna be that muscle getting inflamed, and you get these little pebble-like formations that you wanna pinch and break up, and that's where really you need someone to help guide you through that. In the end of the day, everyone's very. Some people very rarely don't get any. If you've had previous Kybella, your whole neck could be a giant freaking sheetrock. That is when we talk about something called steroids or 5-FU should not be used ad lib. This is something that should be used judiciously because they can cause their own problems. But if you can't get your fingers around something, there's no massage that's gonna help and that's when you need to talk to your surgeon about breaking it up. In the end of the day, those things are normal. We're gonna have a separate video talking about complications of healing from chin liposuction. But in this video, we just wanna talk about how you can break them up. Any other techniques or tips you have to help break them up? Yes, definitely. I have a few tools. This tool can also be used for scar tissue and fibrosis. You can put some oil, uh, oil in the area and then you wanna feather it back and forth. What kind of oil do you use? I use this lymphatic drainage oil. The one I use normally has arnica and it has essential oils for lymphatic flow as well. But you can use whatever oil or lotion you have at home. And in general, okay, let's talk about early on. Would you use hot or cold therapy? So early on when you're super inflamed, I would use cold to decrease the inflammation. Later on at the two week mark when you're getting fibrosis and scar tissue, you wanna heat up the area first because fascia goes between liquid and solid state. So when you liquefy the fascia, then it starts to move and you can mobilize it better and break it down. And then I always recommend doing cryotherapy at the end or cold hydrotherapy, putting a bag of ice at the end to cool it down and draw that blood out of the blood vessels again. And as crazy as it sounds, you can actually do both. You can heat up your neck so your tissue gets soft on the outside and then cool it down at the end. So before massages, it is definitely very advisable, even early on, to use oils to make things smooth so that tenderness is a little bit better and heat it up so that all that scar tissue softens before it goes away and then cool it down afterwards. That combination works out really well. I know this is a ton of information. This is a long video. I wish I could explain to everyone exactly what you need. There's a lot of bumps in the road. In general, when you do liposuction, it is not a point A to point B. It's a point A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, where every week it's getting better, but it's not by a minute to minute. When you massage, it's gonna be amazing, which is the coolest part because it doesn't make a huge difference. But then all of a sudden the stiffness comes back, the tightness comes back, and you get right back into it. But at least our patients believe in us and know, hey, yeah, that made a difference. Now, in the end of the day, you gotta get a professional. Aubrey's a great one, but there's people all over who specialize in this. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, leave a like on this video, subscribe to our channel, and most importantly, we're gonna leave some links for these 
special devices and a link to book a consultation with Aubrey if you want to. Thanks for following this channel. Thank you. Bye.